Hey everybody, uh, sorry for the delay there. Uh, got a twist from Facebook tonight. Because hunting for gold is a page with a high potential reach, quote unquote, from Facebook, I had to enter a special authorization. Uh, they're requiring a higher level of security for those of us with big pages and big followings. So <laughs> go figure. <laughs> you know, they didn't care about you yesterday, but they care today. So uh, I think that's okay. So right now, uh, we're going to talk about waterfalls and placer gold. So I've had that question asked several times in the last few weeks. So why not dive in right now while we've got the water flowing outside? So let's talk about waterfalls and what they can do or cannot do to placer gold. Uh, give you a little background in this. I have, a, I have a background not only in engineering, but I also have a very high interest. Like a lot of people are into solar power and things like that. I'm into hydropower. And so being into hydropower, you get very much aware of the amount of energy stored in a, a drop of one foot of water. You know, the amount of pressure of one foot is about 0.44 pounds per square inch. So for every foot you stack up, the pressure at that bottom point goes up 0.44 pounds. I may as well call it a half a pound. It's a little under. But the idea is as we go up, in altitude, we go up in potential energy. Well, a waterfall is nothing but a huge release of water that releases that energy into the form of, of moving mass, a mass driver, if you will. And so what happens is the waterfall contains potential energy at the top. It flows over, like you can see in this one picture right here, it flows over the top and gently releases and then starts its plunge accelerating at 32 feet per second per second. And so what ends up happening is when it gets to the bottom is when all the energy gets dissipated. In the form, there's several kinds of hydropower devices. One of them is called an impulse device. That's what a waterfall is. It releases its energy on contact, bang. And so what ends up happening at the bottom of the waterfall is that energy shows up as a scattering of the material. And I'll draw a picture of that in a second. Well, when that material scatters, it, it plows anything, including gold, to the side. The whole question is, what is the nature of the bottom? What does it look like? Where's the material down there collecting? Where is it getting blown to bits and sent downstream? And I mean blown to bits by the fact that water going over a waterfall has enough energy when it hits the bottom that any rocks and minerals like a cue ball will get hit and start scattering across and smack into your gold and once it does, your gold will actually get hammered and it'll turn into little thin plates if, it, you know, not very long. And so those thin plates will get cut up, ground up like a garbage grinder. And before you know it, you got a lot of fine gold going downstream and your nuggets are gone. Now, that's one possibility for that nugget. The other possibility is like a cue ball. It goes doo, downstream or doo, it hides in some other place. Let's talk about that. Let's go over to the other, other side. Let me check on you guys right now. That wasn't too good. Let me check to see how things are going besides the phone. <laughs> so, now that we've gone past our Facebook two-factor securities clearance, we can check back in on the page. And uh, we see last night's post. Are we live? We should be. Let's check again. There we are. Hey. Hi, everybody. So we got a few comments here. Let's check, make sure the audio is coming through clear. Just do our little audio check, check. Uh, we've got Charles. Hey, we got everybody on here. Uh, Charles, Justin, Bob, Josh, uh, Bill from Troutdale, Oregon. All right, awesome. I've been to Troutdale. Uh, Texas, uh, Brad Stevens is here, and Brian, Byron Brown, Bob Sheasley's here, and they sound as good. Charles says sound as good. So we're going. Let's go to the bottom of the waterfall. So uh, given that, let's take a look at what happens in, a, in the case of waterfall on our blackboard, which is really a whiteboard. Let's make sure we have a decent color today. We'll call it blue. So you can see it easily, and it matches. So let's say we have our waterfall is a cliff and plunges into a pool at the bottom and then scrapes out 
and at the bottom it, it kind of loops up and forms a little ridge. And the reason it would do this, and I'm talking about this is cut into bedrock. So, so what you see here would be layers of strata that pretty much go horizontally like this and, and, and form the bedrock for this waterfall. And so uh, bedrock continues on down here and so on. And so what happens is uh, as our water goes over the falls and begins its plunge, we take and convert that potential energy up there to kinetic energy at the bottom. And for like a 100 foot waterfall, you're talking about a difference of 60 PSI. So you can think of how much pressure there is in a, in a pretty high, highly tuned, uh, not a fire hydrant, but a, but a hose hydrant at your home. Uh, you know, so, but it's, it's also large in diameter. You know, typically it might be 10 cubic feet per second at peak flow or higher, maybe thousands. That all shows up down here in energy that basically takes anything down here at the bottom and shoots it out. So if there were cobbles or boulders, they would tend to be shot out and distributed downstream from that point. Now, they're gonna, the bigger particles are gonna distribute out first and the smaller stuff and smaller stuff and smaller stuff downstream. So what happens here is anything that is deposited down in this part is going to show up starting right here. And what happens in this case, because it's a nice polished bowl, and this is really hard material or it's soft material, but leaves a nice smooth finish. If that happens, everything, including the gold is not going to be, it's going to be shot out of here and this will be cleaned out. And so all the gold will start from this point on downstream and there will be nothing in here. Now that's one type of waterfall condition, and it's not an uncommon one in many places. Another possibility is this one. Let's say it's the same kind of waterfall structure. Let's say there's a little bit of back erosion in here and a little funkiness to the, to the strata down below where we get a multiple ridge kind of condition and then, it, and then it goes down. Meaning the waterfall comes over, plummets to the bottom, but instead of scattering everything out, it starts to do like a riffle thing here where different flows form inside of here and keep things churning such that maybe directly beneath the waterfall it's clear but on each side we get boulders and cobbles building up and sand and gravel underneath that so it's sheltered kind of like it would be in a sluice box well what's going to happen here is is very different from the previous case and that is remember I, we had that thing shooting out the back end well here it's going to kind of boil a little bit go in a circle and dump more material out, including, remember, the gold goes to the bottom first under those conditions. And then it might shoot some finer gold downstream and pebbles and cobbles and stuff like that. And possibly in high flow, it might jet out a big boulder from time to time. But in, in other cases, it's going to leave these boulders down here. Now, what happens in this case, I'm going to draw it with our fancy dancy gold colored material and hope it shows up. But we're going to end up with little gold traps down in here. So this area down here is gold and this area down in here is gold at bedrock. So somehow I've got one of these because I've got, you know, like a 30 foot rock boulder in the middle of this pile. Somehow you have to get down underneath that stuff and it can be dangerous. But the fact is that the water flow simply helps to concentrate more gold. So it's kind of got the opposite effect of that other condition. In other words, in high flow, this thing, boils and churns and continues and any gold that drops off the top of the waterfall and any gold that's found from the material that the waterfall is made out of so any gold nuggets that happen to make it over the top here are going to come down here and start to concentrate down here they'll also concentrate finer chunks along this trail same as the last time and finer and finer until you get downstream there's just nothing but flour but that's two different kinds of waterfall conditions that you want to be aware of and probably the two that you need to kind of keep your eyes open for. What's at the bottom of the fall? Do you see rocks and cobbles and things like that with sand and, and, and uh, you know, various types of, of material uh, trapped at the bottom? Cobbles and sands and gravels and, and, and so sample it and look for, first thing, look for lots of black sands concentrated down in there. In this area down below, I'll circle it in red here. We'll get fancy and color it another color. So right down in here and here and possibly a little bit along in here, 
sample and look for black sands. That's your first indicator for this kind of condition. Second thing you're going to start looking for is gold flakes and fine gold. But particularly gold flakes and possibly nuggets. But you're really only going to find the nuggets because this thing bounces and it's in so much turbulence when it goes. The energy released from here is literally in a, in a relatively moderate waterfall. It could be megawatts when it's running in the kind of weather we've been having the last few months. Megawatts at concentrated right here. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to continue to drill a hole in the rock below and it's going to continue to rumble everything underneath so all the gold will sift to the bottom until it can kind of get situated where it locks down or gets driven into a crack. And that's the other possibility here is if there are cracks underneath here, it will tend to, to find those cracks and pile drive the gold in and pop out any sand and silica that was in there in place of the crack to hold it open. So now what you've got is another type of concentrator, which isn't just a, a sieve and a, and a kind of gravity separator. You've also got a, a pile driver pushing this stuff in. And so you're going to have to use some, some hooks and things like that and do, you know, gold sniping techniques to pull that stuff out. And that's kind of it for tonight. I just thought I'd touch on gold and waterfalls and the path of placer gold, where it goes, what happens and why it happens. It happens because there's a huge amount of energy released in a waterfall. That energy has to go somewhere, and what it typically goes into is motion of the bottom materials. Boulders, cobbles, and so forth are nothing for a waterfall to blow away. The thing you want to look for is, did it get blown out, or did it just get rearranged? Two different conditions. There's lots of other possibilities, but those are the two major ones you want to watch for. Do you see piles of cobbles and gravels to the sides? and maybe, maybe back under the waterfall? Or do you see the thing being cleaned out and it looks really nice and polished and maybe you can even make out a fish or two below the waterfall if you look carefully? That's a different condition entirely. And you'll have to look in both of those cases when the water flow is down because getting underneath one of these things when it's really moving is dangerous as all get out. So that's it for tonight. Prospect of Jess over and out. Uh, I think we've got everybody. Uh, Hi, CJ, you're on. And uh, we got Art and Michael is on again. Tennessee Hillbilly, Richard Bunkog, welcome. Good to hear from you. So this is what we do, and we're going to meet again tomorrow night and talk more about gold. But we're talking tonight about gold waterfalls and the path of placer gold under a waterfall. What happens when the gold hits that waterfall and flies out? Do you get these nice chunky nuggets, or do you get, you know, Placer gold and powder, you know, uh, not placer gold, but fine, fine gold and powder and nothing at the bottom, just cleaned out. Uh, so it all depends on what the water is able to do at the bottom or whether it shoots it downstream or it concentrates. Two choices, lots of combinations in between. So that's Prospector Jess, hunting for gold, sourdoughminer.com. Uh, also, I wanted to call your attention as we do always. So let's see where we got here. Uh, we have 2020. That's the topic of the night. So we're talking about water flow and moving gold. And the 2020 report covers that at sourdoughminer.com. Go check it out. Catch you then. Good prospecting and good night.